Hello, everyone. Welcome. Uh, my name is Alyssa. I'm Youth Project Manager at the International Secretariat for Water. It's a real pleasure to be here with you today for this amazing session that we're about to have. Um, so just a few reminders for the housekeeping rules. So we would ask everybody to please keep their mics closed. Um, and if ever you're um, your internet is not so good. I would also suggest to close your cameras, uh, but we will have ample time to answer all of your questions for our two amazing hosts today. So it is my pleasure to introduce you to Bota and Natalia, who will be taking the lead for this uh, for this great session. So Bota, off to you. Hello, everyone. It's absolutely great to have you with us today. And I think we'll just start our presentation in a second, but we're absolutely glad that there are so many people interested in the blue piece and there'll be more coming. And yeah, and the session might be recorded, it is recorded. Yeah, so today we will be definitely presenting our work that we had done throughout these several years, but also very intensive work that we will be showcasing that we have done throughout this like two past months. So there will be a lot coming in. Uh, can we dive into the presentation? Are you sharing yes. the screen? One moment. Yeah. Thank you so much. See that I'm still admitting people. <laughs> I hope they will not miss the interesting information. Uh, so uh, today there will be absolutely me, Natalia, speaking to you and my dear friend Boda. I have some of the contacts listed here. And after this presentation, we will be uploading all the documents that you will see today onto the cafeteria section of the, of the uh, General Assembly website. Uh, can we go on to the next slide? Oh, oh my God. Uh, yeah. So there is the outline of today's presentation. And I see in chat so many people that we know that are coming from the former General Assembly. That's so great. Uh, so today we will be speaking about who we actually are, why we have the authority to speak to you today on behalf of the Blue Peace, but also the idea that we'll be sharing with you. Uh, why the Blue Peace and what is actually the Blue Peace and the Blue Peace Index. But for that session, we'll have our distinguished speaker uh, telling you the story. And the main thing that we'll be presenting today is uh, an animation that we had done together with Boda and a nice team of people with the support of the, uh, of the Inter International uh, Secretary for Water of how you can organize a Blue Peace Youth Calculations yourself. So that will be this zesty moment that we hope will go smoothly. And at the end, we'll have a Q&A session but please remember that you definitely can uh, write your questions in the chat and we will try uh, like our best to answer those questions in due course. But before we dive in into the discussing of who we are, I will probably ask everyone, Boda uh, also, uh, can, you, can you share the link? So we want before going into the blue piece, ask you everyone who is in the room and who will be entering the room, what is Blue Peace for you? And we will be collecting answers uh, like throughout this like 10 minute that I will be speaking and announce the results just before our distinguished speaker will take the lead. So we just want to know like, what is your expectation or what is your vision of the Blue Peace right now? We know that there will be like, the, you might answer it like, will admit any answer. <laughs> so there are no wrong answers, just your feeling. Yeah, and Bota shared the AHA slides. Perfect. So you can go for this link and as you will be listening to me, just go on and do the blue piece for you. Yeah, perfect. I see the first answers appearing. So Bota, may we continue with the presentation, I guess as people will be answering. 
Perfect. And we go on to the next slide. I will just speak briefly about ourselves. So uh, me, myself, Natalia, I hold an MSc in Water Cooperation and Diplomacy from the University for Peace, University of IHE Delft and the Oregon State University. Uh, that's a very nice, interesting program. So if you have any questions regarding this program, please write to us, but probably privately, and we'll be happy to answer your questions on the educational backgrounds. Boda has the same degree, but also is a current doctorate candidate in water cooperation, conflict and diplomacy from the IIT Delft. Uh, I'm coming from Turkmenistan, Boda is coming from Kazakhstan. So both are the Central Asian neighboring republics. And we both have extensive experience working in the water field. For me, it's like about five years. For Boda, it's like 10 years working in the water sector, in environmental sector, and dealing with the questions of youth, water, diplomacy, all these, you know, cooperation context and ads. Can we go on the next slide? So we, as you are right now, we met with Boda on the fourth general assembly. So, so three years ago, we were in your shoes and I see in the chat, a lot of people coming from exactly that, you know, uh, general assembly and that's so cool that we can, you know, meet again. Uh, so definitely, I would recommend to use these, um, this platform of YPW, especially the General Assembly, of sharing your even craziest ideas of the water sector and including the youth into the water sector. So please use this opportunity to talk to us with people who already have been, you know, throughout these years, but also to speak to yourself and also to among yourselves so that you can generate this um, like amazing uh, campaign of the water. So can we go on to the next slide? As we were, uh, you know, studying together, as we met on the YPW, we were thinking with Bota, how can we engage youth into the water sector? How to uh, become more, um, uh, bring more innovation into the water sector. And we came with this zesty name that we absolutely adore, which is Water Cafe. Everyone lo loves cafe. So we just created something called the Water Cafe. Uh, and we tried to build such an information space for early career water experts from, in our case, Central Asia, in order to exchange the information and participate in discussions, even share the research results. At that moment of studying, of you know, learning new things outside of our countries, we understood that there is a lot of information in the world that needs to be shared with our amazing water guys back home. And we feel that this idea, this is something that can really resonate with you in your regions, because this is not only for Central Asia, it just works for Central Asia right now, but it can work for any country, for any basin in this case. So definitely find this kind of spaces and just talk about water. And uh, on the next slide, um, there, there is a little bit of our uh, theory of change that I would like to share. This is something that we're thinking with water. Shall we share or shall we not? Uh, but I feel that this is something, again, can, that can resonate with you living in your regions. So when we were thinking about the water cafe and how we can change and what should be changed in our perception, we were thinking about our uh, five or even six transboundary republics living uh, side by side, sharing two transboundary rivers. And we understood that there is a huge separation of approaches in understanding the water resources in each of the country, which is strengthening the national positions, which is not definitely leading to dialogue in between the countries, because the water becomes the water security question. And uh, I will absolutely upload this presentation onto the cafeteria section, as I said, so you will go, you know, in these details, uh, like throughout this presentation. But our main solutions were centering around getting the uh, promoting the scientific knowledge into the region promoting the exchange of the scientific knowledge but the main change that we're looking into through this water cafe thing is development of epistemic community of researchers so if you're looking for some transboundary solution in your case probably developing a, like a scientific community that will have uh, like like similar backgrounds is probably something that you would like to try to. So that's a little bit about us, about our legacies, about our amazing water cafe. And uh, please, next slide. 
as we were yeah so um i hear i'm just listing a little bit uh the water cafe itself so that's a space on facebook page uh that usually we lead in russian language because for our publics russian is something that unites us all so the new um the new like news coming uh in different like english uh, resources we try to translate those into the russian and give them here but when we already had the water cafe our uh, further idea was to think how we can like promote the empowerment of the youth so we were interested to at that moment to seek for an instrument that will help us to promote this empowerment of youth the main idea was that yes we can speak that the youth needs to advocate for their river basins for the better practices but does the youth have enough of the you know technical background to actually advocate for something we were thinking a lot about that. What can be this amazing tool that will help you? Uh, what will be the tool that will help promote water and peace? Because when you study at the master's degree, in many of the cases, uh, like as we experienced, water is perceived as a potential instrument for war. So we didn't want to go into that, you know, rhetorics. We wanted to stay at the water and peace understanding. We are looking for something that will promote the scientific approach in discussing transboundary issues, uh, something that will help you to analyze and research more about your own transboundary rivers, and uh, something that will trigger the joint projects across the institutions and borders across the youth communities living together. And I think we found this amazing tool uh, in the blue piece. And I, I think by now we will dive a little bit into how you understand the blue piece, because I feel that the next slide is about getting the results of the poll. But after that, our distinguished speaker will tell a little bit about what is the blue piece. So here we have the results of the section. So we see that there is a lot of water, a lot of peace, cooperation, water diplomacy. Great, great, perfect. I think you are getting on the exactly what we're looking into, commitment to water, transboundary waters. Absolutely. So this is a great thing. Uh, we are moving forward and we're giving right now the floor to our distinguished speaker who is coming from the Swiss agency uh, uh, Swiss Agency for Development and Cooperation, Ms. Stephanie Pierce, the rape shoot. And if Ms. Stephanie is ready. Oh, yeah, I am absolutely. Yay, great. <laughs> Hello to all of you. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me here with you today. This is a fantastic road and a program which you've paved for this this week of the general assembly uh, for the world youth world parliament i'm sorry i'm on my phone so it's a bit of a an acrobatic but um, i'm hoping you see me properly uh, so first of all yes absolutely this is an, an incredible program you have and i think this new business as usual this new version of working on this virtual mode has allowed us also to have this fantastic increased participation from around the world so I think, first of all, congratulations to all of you. I'm really glad to be here with you today. Um, secondly, I also wanted to highlight one thing, perhaps. The first thing is that um, under this blue piece and working for the Swiss Agency for Development and Cooperation, we interact with many different stakeholders, be it governments, different local to national authorities, international agencies, among others, the UN, uh, different private companies, etc. But you guys, and we're lucky here to have Natalia and Botta leading this exercise, the two of you and your team behind you and the youth behind it, you've been able to really capture and understand and create this momentum for the Blue Peace, which really comes to show that we need to go beyond the traditional water experts or the traditional, as they was called them, the gray hairs, and to really reach out much wider for more long lasting impact. So this being said, let's go to the first, or the next slide, if you will. Next slide, please. Yeah, there you go. So I wanted to, um, I won't go too much into who I am and what I'm doing. So I'm working for the Swiss Development Agency uh, for the last five and a half years now, time flies. Um, by training, I'm a water engineer and I've had a stint of experience in 
public and private and NGO uh, organizations uh, before, which was also able to give me a bit this, this broad understanding of what does water mean from the different perspectives of the different users also. Uh, and now I'd like to introduce this video, which was prepared by the Economist Intelligence Unit, which is our partner behind this Blue Peace Index. And it also gives an understanding of a bit broader on what is Blue Peace. Thank you. Water is the basis of life on Earth. In 2010, the United Nations recognized access to water as a human right. Today, more people than ever have secure access to water to live and work. But this progress is under threat due to climate change, population growth, and unsustainable exploitation of natural resources. Not only is this a threat to health and economic development, it also endangers peace. Competition for dwindling water supplies can spark conflict between and within nations. Nearly 40% of the world's population lives in regions that rely on water sources that cross national boundaries. It's vital, therefore, that countries that share the same water resources work together. The Blue Peace Index is a tool that measures how well countries manage transboundary water resources. In this, the first year of the index, it looks at five river basins. The index reveals that transboundary collaboration has already improved water security for many communities. By developing critical infrastructure, limiting the cost of floods and droughts, and promoting economic and political integration. But more must be done to ensure that access to life's most basic resource is equitable and peaceful. To discover the principal strategies for achieving blue peace, visit bluepeaceindex.eiu.com. Thank you. There we go. So this was just a first introduction and you can find more on the on the website which was mentioned and I'm sure Bata and Natalia will share the links if, uh, if need be. So basically through this video, I also wanted to highlight a few key messages. And um, first of all, this situation statement we have. First of all, that water is a highly shared resource. As was mentioned, so we have two in five people which depend on water which belongs to more than one country. And we have 75% of the countries around the world which share rivers, lakes, or aquifers. And of course, when you talk about sharing between countries, I mean, I'm sure most of you, or more than two thirds of you, live in countries where you have a river which goes into different countries, or you have a lake which is shared between different countries. And you can, of course, there from the onset, understand the challenges you have in using this water in an equitable and sustainable manner. And of course, this, uh, this sharing of resource doesn't just go between the countries, but also goes between the sectors. We, want, we need water for irrigation, for drinking, for production, producing energy, and so on and so forth, which just increases the complexity of sharing the resource. On the other hand, and this is not a new statement to most of you, I assume, it's been mentioned over and over again, water is a highly stressed resource. We have a fixed amount of water on Earth, but we have a growing population, growing demands, a growing way of life also, which increases the request for water. So these two main parameters lead to the concern that water can be and is a source of potential conflict. So there's been no real statement of water being the source of an actual war, but we do know that water is used in situations of war, either as a way of um, a weakening the population or simply has been causing tensions, increasing the conflict. And so this proves that we need to have a paradigm shift to move from considering water purely on a technical level to involving all the stakeholders related to this water, be it political, be it from the private sector, the civil society, you guys, etc. Next slide, please. And so as the word mentioned, blue peace, of course, it's peace through blue, so peace through water. And you've already mentioned a few of these buzzwords on the, on the slide, which you've all interacted with. It's to promote water, not as a, as a tool for conflict, but as an instrument for cooperation. And this cooperation, as I just mentioned, is between countries, so across borders, but it's also across sectors within one country, within one community. It's also across generations. 
And this is why it's, it's so crucial to be able to engage with all these different sets of stakeholders. And you are currently part of one of them and will be in the future part of other stakeholders in your future um, positions and jobs. Next slide, please. So this was just to give you a brief um, underline of what we in SDC are currently doing. We have different initiatives under this Blue Peace Movement with the aim, as we mentioned, of gaining momentum, gaining partners, and also gaining visibility at a global level. So we have a, a global set of high level actors on the, on the left, you see a picture there of uh, 15 countries which have, which have worked to develop a set of recommendations. And they produced uh, this, this, this book in 2017 on a matter of survival. And within there you have seven recommendations which deal with the water at the different levels from technical to political to global. Then in the center, we have the Blue Peace Middle East Initiative. So that's, I think, quite a, an interesting uh, photo of, well, you see two representatives turning the wheels to handle the, the water being freed into the river downstream. On the bottom right, we have the Blue Peace Central Asia Initiative. And some of you are aware of this initiative quite closely. I'm really happy of your engagement and never forget, always keep this in mind. And then on the top right, which is, Concerning some of you already there also is this Blue Peace Youth Movement we have been supporting and it's impressive to see, as I mentioned again, the way it's been taken up by you guys. I mean, we're beyond, we're beyond these barriers of being politically correct, we're beyond these barriers of belonging to one country, or one set of interests, and that's what we need for the future. And then on the bottom left, we have, I put a few graphics there, but it's really to symbolize the reflection around developing new mechanisms for financing. We know that without financing, you can't do anything. It's always nice to agree on things, but you need the money to back it up. And for that, we need new mechanisms to be able to finance at the transboundary level. Next. And next slide. I don't know if it's me or if you changed. I, I changed, I'm sorry. I think there's just a delay. Okay, maybe. Sorry. Um, are you on the Blue Peace Index current status? Yes. Okay. Uh, Sorry, there's, I can there's see a it on, on my computer. I'm not sure if you see it. I'm still on the initiatives, but maybe it's just me on my phone. Yeah, virtual modality isn't always hip when we don't have the same, <laughs> same connection systems. Ah, okay, not the only one apparently. Oh. <laughs> Only me in enjoying this. But nice I had picture. taken you here. <laughs> okay, so once it comes up, um, so yeah, indeed the same same for you guys. Okay, well then let me just quickly also introduce. Among these initiatives, we have, as we mentioned, the uh, Blue Peace Index, and the Blue Peace Index comes from a joint initiative with the Economist Intelligence Unit. So then the uh, think tank attached to The Economist. There we go, fantastic, thank you. And so The Economist is a global media. Some of you might know about them and they are out of the water box or water bottle as we call it. So the, the aim here also of the Blue Peace, as was mentioned, was to go beyond the traditional water experts, but also engage with different levels of actors. And The Economist Intelligence Unit is one of those, let's say innovative partners we have within SDC. We don't usually traditionally work with such partners, but they came to us to also try to develop this index and to bring the discussion of transboundary water management at a different level. Next slide. Thank you. So this is just a quick review of where we stand currently. So the video you saw was of 2019 when we only had five basins. Now we've added two more basins and the, the Economist Intelligence Unit's work, which is the Central Asian two river basins of the Amu and Siodaria. I'm happy to say that some of you here have been also uh, involved in the, in the exercise. And alongside that, uh, a few of you have also worked through these water cafes on indexes um, based in, in America. And so the aim of course is to increase the amount of basins being developed. Under this work, um, we also try to bring out a set of recommendations to be able to work on the, on the conclusions which have been led through this exercise and to see how things can be improved. Next slide. And this for me is the, the heart or the key element of why a Blue Peace Index. Fine, it's nice to be able to rate basins and how well they're managing their resources, but the aim isn't there. 
The aim, first of all, is to, as I mentioned, bring this to a non-specialist audience, so to raise awareness of understanding of transboundary and drought management of water, is to spur public debates on the goals and best practices, so to be able to also see, okay, find which basin has the best management for water, where can I see what to improve, etc. It's also to highlight these policy and technical solutions which exist and which can be transferred from one experience to the other. Uh, provide a tool for this holistic assessment, because when you talk of river basin management, it's not just the amount of water being shared. So it's not just a tech technical point of view, but it's also the institutional environment around it. Do we have a river basin organization which is supporting the um, transboundary management of water? Do we have agreements between the countries? Do we have the tools and mechanisms to share information, etc.? And do we also have the financing behind it to back up this transboundary management of water? Which leads me to the last point, which is to provide a benchmark for investments. The idea also is to say, well, if in a basin we have a good rating of the index, that means that the transboundary management is good or stable, and therefore allowing for a better environment to invest in transboundary water resources. Where you come into play, and which is something which we want to develop more and more also, is that this index can be used for capacity building to understand what is behind transboundary water management and how we can each one of us help for this. So I've just added a last slide on how to join the movement. I'll make it brief. You can go to the last slide. There we go. So just how to get involved under this Blue Peace movement. Um, you can, again, go and check all of this on the website we have, thebluepeace.org. And then there are different modalities through social media. You can participate in a campaign. You can, you can check out which partners are working on the Blue Peace and how to support them or how to join them. But you can also lead your own Blue Peace initiative, which is a bit what has been done here with um, this water cafe as an example. So um, there we go. This is the basis on which I wanted to, um, to launch this uh, Blue Peace Index discussion. And I'm really happy to see all of you guys on board and I'm really good to see what's going to happen out of this. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, dear Stephanie. That was amazing. That exactly what got us into the blue piece. I mean, this comprehensive approach into understanding the water diplomacy tools. So we will just start the next presentation coming from us. But if you can share also, I know you are my technical guy today. <laughs> I'm torturing you. Sorry. Yeah, but in the next presentation, so we're getting to the zesty details on how we got to the animation. Um, yeah, so that is uh, that is where we're going to. So organizing or trying to organize your own workshop on calculating the blue piece yourself. That's something that we were thinking of as the blue piece index actually came out. So if we can go on to the next slide. Yeah, so our journey, let's say, our idea started like three years ago from that fourth assembly or general assembly where we got involved into the blue piece but then we started to think to ourselves how you can organize an event an engaging event for youth where you will be speaking of water as an instrument for peace where you'll be you know like uh, thinking about the water in the sense. So our first event uh, that we conducted was the at the University for Peace in Costa Rica, where we started our master's degree. And that was exactly where we started teaching about the water as an instrument for peace, promoting youth action and advocacy for these people. We got just guys coming from the uh, MS, MSC, uh, MA, MSc students coming from the water sector, coming from the environment, law policy. So that was, you can imagine a diverse community of master's students. They knew something about the water, but they didn't know that there are so many approaches towards understanding this complicated question. So we tried simple things, I would say. We tried to introduce them to the blue piece. I mean, the idea itself, we tried to have some engaging elements, as you can see on the photos. I mean, we tried the drops and asking them the question, what is water for you? What does it mean? We tried playing around with the blue like chalkboard that we had, and people were coming from different different countries all around the globe. And we tried to ask them to write uh, water in their language. So that was cool. I mean, uh, these were some of the things, but also we got the Vox Pop. Uh, that's exactly when you have people speaking about the event or speaking about the theme of the event during the event or right after the event. So we uh, have all of these materials exactly on this website that I'm leaving in this presentation. So you will be easy to you know check it on your own. 
uh, and that was an interesting experience for us. But then, going to the next slide, then uh, it was the uh, the day actually of the coming out of the Blue Peace Index happened, and that was exactly the moment when we got hit like by this idea. You yes, you have finally the instrument that you can use. Uh, you can somehow showcase to youth, uh, they like feel the power of the youth in their research skills and their innovative skills. And you can really try to do the Blue Peace Index calculation yourself. And that was something that we did at the Oregon State University when we had these uh, guys, uh, our dear friends coming from the master's and PhD already from the water sector. So you can understand that those people, they had the background in the water. And we try to engage them into this calculation process. If they can actually understand the river basin in two hours or less, if they can understand the main problems that are hitting the basin of our choice, if they can understand the main solutions that they can offer. So it was the whole this process. Uh, for the United States, we chose the Colorado River because this was something that everyone knew besides us because we we're coming from Central Asia, but they knew the river basin. Uh, no one knew how well it is uh, under the cooperation. And that was actually the first experience of calculating the interest rate level. So this was something that we were thinking for ourselves. How, can, how far can you go with the Blue Peace Index? Can you actually adapt the methodology, not only for a two-hour event, but also for a different kind of calculation? And we did that. And for this, if you have any of the questions, please refer to them in the chat. And we'll try to maybe have a separate you know, like discussion exactly on this. So this format of organizing the event where you already have this advocacy moment with the research moment, you know, stitched together, this was really like liked by the youth from different countries and there were people writing to us and asking us how we did it. So uh, we were thinking, uh, we, we like got, you know, this idea spread. So the calculation of the Jordan was in process. Then the Grarax River uh, was kind of being prepared. And you will hear from, from the guys that we have today that they're still in the process of conducting the Blue Peace event for the Kurarax River. There was also the trying uh, to calculate it for the Ganges River and many more. We'll have the different youth coming from different countries speaking to you just in a few minutes. Uh, how how they understood the Blue Peace calculations and how well they could manage the event or are planning the event. Uh, so in our case, the, uh, the International uh, Secretary for Water, they approached us, me and Bode, and they said that this is a fantastic methodological tool, I mean, for definitely organizing youth into some research community that really can stand for their position because they know after calculating the Blue Peace Index, they know more about the basin. So that was something that they said we need to develop into online tool or inspired us, if to be correct. And that's something that we'll be presenting the results from uh, just slightly later. So if we can go into the next slide. Yeah. So if you go to the YPW website at this moment, we have created just a starting page for the workshop guidelines for the Blue Peace Youth Calculations. So this is a part of the process right now that we are in, me and Boda, and also a little team of our creators uh, that we want to share with you the documents, the videos, and different approaches and also the contacts of the people who calculated or prepared such a calculation uh, in their regard. So if we can go into the next slide. We are talking exactly about the six documents. Uh, yeah, da, da, da. almost there. No, Bota. I see Stephanie. Okay, so uh, there will be. <laughs> uh, as we're moving forward. So uh, on the next slide, there was the information uh, that we are in the stage of the preparation of the six videos. And uh, we are in the stage of the preparation and uploading to that website. So check on it uh, in the coming two, three weeks, there will be the new documents appearing on that website. Exactly. So those will be the documents. Um, Boda. Can you please share the screen? So there will be the documents appearing. 
and those will be leading us exactly to getting to the facilitation plan, getting the calculation sheets, getting the uh, the consolidated. Uh, yeah, exactly. So we have the uh, documents providing basic packages and enabling you to calculate or to conduct this event for your own. And there will be also the contacts, as I said, of people who already conducted some of the Blue Peace youth calculations on their own. And also us, of course, because we had to do our homework well when we were preparing for the Colorado River. I would say, yeah, we will be in the charge of, you know, advising or at least, you know, giving you some, some guidelines on whom to ask and what to ask. So if we can go into the next slide. Among the documents, as I said, there will be the event flyer, the facilitation plan, because we know that for some of you, uh, there will, this will be the first time, you know, conducting an event. So what to remember, what to not forget, that will be in the facilitation plan. The checklist, again, a little bit, you know, corresponding to that, the scoring sheet and also the consolidated calculation sheet, because from all of the scoring sheets that you will spread among your uh, youth who will be calculating the basin, you then have to somehow consolidate everything into you know, single numbers. Of course, this will be, remember that this will be an official uh, blue piece index that you will calculate, but this will be your trying of the research skills of the information that is available in internet. So you will be understanding better the basin from different perspectives. And there will be some guidelines on the icebreaker because as I talked before, we had this amazing event at the UPs and definitely we have some authority to give you, you know, some advice on how to do the icebreakers. Can we go on to the next slide? And this is a part, we're getting closer. So this is a part of our amazing preparation for the videos that you will see. Today you will see just only one video, but right now it's how, like we're in the preparation of these five videos of how to get started, what to remember exactly, use of indicators and scoring. It sounds to be like a simple idea, but there are some, you know, some, some interesting uh, uh, things that you have to remember. The calculating of the scores. There are some questions on how to calculate what to remember. There are some uh, or a lot of questions on data sources and missing information. We're all coming from different river basins. The information is shared at different levels within the countries, between the countries. So that's something to definitely take into account. We're basing our uh, animation that is coming out on the original methodology that was created by the Economist Intelligence Unit, but also our ideas, maybe our, you know, like insights uh, in the pro like as we did them in the process. And there will be a video on organizing an event, like a general overview of how to organize. And I think right now it's the perfect time when you can watch the first video, if I'm not mistaken, the, the next slide is about exactly this, right? Yeah, exactly. So the first video of why do we need an index which calculates transboundary cooperation? And don't blame me speaking to you the third time. Short video number one. Why do we need an index? Uh, this this video, right, Natalia? Hello, Natalia. Sorry, yes, yes. Okay. Short video number one. Why do we need an index which calculates transboundary cooperation? Global population growth and unsustainable management of natural resources threaten the quality and quantity of freshwater resources available for humans. The limited character of freshwater resources paves the way for potential conflicts over water resources at different levels and between different countries. Almost 40% of the world's population lives in the river basin shared with other countries. This means that two out of five people rely on transboundary water for drinking and domestic use. For example, the Danube River Basin is shared by 19 countries. It's the river basin shared by the largest number of countries in the world. 
Thus, a successful transboundary water cooperation is vital for both local and global sustainable development. That said, how can we improve transboundary cooperation? Is it possible to analyze the current cooperation processes and find their gaps? The answer is yes. We invite you to the Blue Peace World to explore the complexity of a cooperation paradigm. It is based on the Blue Peace Index methodology developed by the Economist Intelligence Unit and Swiss Agency for Development and Cooperation. The Blue Peace is a global movement which aims to develop a culture of peace while achieving equitable and sustainable use of precious freshwater resources across borders, sectors and generations. Simply speaking, the Blue Peace movement believes that water should be used for building a dialogue. The Blue Peace Index provides a tool to measure how well countries manage their shared water resources. The approach aims to identify the strengths and weaknesses of the cooperation framework to then work towards the development of recommendations for improvement. More specifically, it explores cooperation through five lenses of policy and legal frameworks, institutional arrangements and participation, water management instruments, infrastructure and financing, and cooperation context. The Blue Peace Index can be used by all interested bodies, but for this journey, we are now focusing on mobilizing young leaders aiming to drive water innovation and advocacy. Youth are actively engaged in the Blue Peace movement. They are considered as an important stakeholder and the main driver of positive change in the water sector, building tomorrow's experts and champions. Their voices are being increasingly heard at various political and negotiation platforms. To foster youth voices, we are now presenting an engaging workshop with the support of the International Secretariat for Water. This workshop is called the Blue Peace Youth Calculations and is a space where the youth provide the brains behind the assessment of specifically selected river basins. As an ultimate goal, the event aims to generate research interest and promote dialogue amongst the youth of riparian states sharing transboundary waters. We invite you to follow this exciting learning journey on transboundary water cooperation. We will offer a set of recommendations and tools required to organize your own workshop on the Blue Peace Youth Calculations. All you need to do is to identify the rear basin you want to work on, download the necessary documents from the website of the World Youth Parliament for Water, and watch the explanatory videos. You may wish to work alone or invite your friends, colleagues, or even youth and experts from other neighboring countries. You may also choose to organize an online event attracting youth from all over the world. The Blue Peace Youth Calculations will enable you and your team to explore the complexity of the transboundary issues in an easy and fun way through networking and capacity building activities. The following series of videos, how to get started, use of indicators and scoring, calculating scores, data sources and missing information, and organizing an event will provide a short overview of how to organize a Blue Peace Youth Calculations event. Are you ready to start? Let's go to youthforwater.org. Thank you. Yeah, we enjoyed a lot when we were creating this video. Absolutely. And we have this guy who is drawing for us. So definitely. That was such an amazing experience. So there will be five more videos coming in. They were almost in the same kind of uh, in the same animation, let's say. So that will be really cool to organize an event with this. And now I would like to give the floor to our amazing ladies and gentlemen who are with us today. Also, I see them in the chat room too, uh, who actually shared their own experiences in conducting the Blue Peace event or thinking of conducting the Blue Peace event. So please hear the guys, they will speak to you from different parts of the world. <laughs> Hi everyone, 
my name is Elodie. I'm from um, Geneva in Switzerland and I've been working with the Blue Peace team on the Blue Peace Index for the Nile Basin. Actually, we work on a sub-basin level uh, focusing on Ethiopia, Sudan and Egypt. Uh, we've chosen this, those three countries because of the ongoing and uh, unconclusive so far negotiations around the GERD, the Great Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. And our idea was a bit to, to understand what were the current um, institutions, agreements, but also flaws among those three countries in order to understand what ideally an agreement should be covering. Um, and I, I think I would really recommend to, to other youth to, to use the Blue Peace Index because it's, it's really, I think it, it's really easy to use. Um, the, the process, the guidelines are, are pretty straightforward. So even without uh, 10 years of experience in, in the water sector, I think it's yeah, it's, it, it's, it's feasible and it's really, it's, it's still a comprehensive tool, despite being easy to, to use. Marhaba, I am Ahmed from Palestine and I have assist and work on the Boobies Index Calculation for the longest river in the world, which is the Nile River. We include in our work three countries, Sudan, Egypt and Ethiopia. We know that for the many years ago that many civilizations were built beside these rivers and locally there is many songs and stories speak about the river and what the beauty came from it especially for the egypt countries one of the most exciting things that we found during the war is the acceptance of from the local youth from this country to contribute and help us in this work um, and as such, I've become part of the Blue Peace team of the World Youth Parliament for Water, where I've been working on uh, the fifth pillar of the Blue Peace Index, that on cooperation, um, mostly in Egypt. I really enjoyed uh, working with this index because it uh, it has really taught me um, how to make such a, a complex and all-encompassing com concept such as Blue Peace really tangible and measurable. Uh, and it's uh, very comprehensive and has really op opened my mind, broadened my mind uh, with regards to all the different co components that are part of Blue Peace. And if you want to do any research or any policy influencing or yeah, anything like that, I feel like consulting the Blue Peace Index, calculating it for your uh, case study, calculating it for your context is really essential in making sure that you understand the broadness of um, yeah of all the elements that are part of it. So I highly recommend other youths to also work with this index. It is a very useful tool. We have decided to work on Kudarak River Basin as our country Armenia is the part of this basin with its neighboring countries. There is absence of huge involvement in local decision making processes lack of environment education and low public awareness. We have been inspired of Blue Peace Index during the 15th session of the European Youth Parliament for Water. Through this index, we'll examine Kura Arak's basin countries' regulatory and institutional landscapes. Young people will be able to better communicate, to work together to drive changes towards sustainable transboundary water management and river ecosystem protection, contribute to a more collaborative and peaceful society. We plan to create a Kura Arax Youth Coalition, which will be the first joint initiative for peace building through water between youth of this basin. Water should be managed on a democratic basis, with citizens, including young people, participating in decision making processes. It is the youth who will inherit the virtues and vices of today's decisions. Nature does not have boundaries, and the environmentally conscious societies and cooperative attitude are key to solve global problems and rebuild trust between the nations. Hi, uh, my name is Cholpon and I'm from Kyrgyzstan. And Kyrgyzstan is one of five countries located in the region of Central Asia. The Republic of Kazakhstan and the Kyrgyz Republic, they share the waters of uh, transboundary Central Asian rivers, um, Chu and Talas. 
And uh, so uh, we are going uh, to actually hold a series of BPI calculations uh, for such rivers in between of our countries. And starting from this Chutalas rivers uh, would be the beginning of our BPI calculation journey. Uh, looking exactly at these river basins uh, would be a valuable way for us um, as uh, to, for use of Central Asia to learn deeper on different aspects of water cooperation within these basins and on different levels, including the challenges and opportunities uh, to improve and enhance water cooperation. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone who contributed to this video, but also we would like to thank all of the organizations that were, you know, were producing the animation. It was so many organizations participating. It was the International Secretary for Water. It was the SDC, the Swiss Cooperation and Development Partner. It was also the Economist Intelligence Unit. So that's a huge work of all of the organizations and including us. So definitely, again, I will be uploading all of the materials um, the video probably, yes, uh, probably too, but we will double check on this. Maybe we'll first upload it to YouTube and then the link to the cafeteria, but we'll double check on this this coming two days. Yeah, so that's probably mostly it for our session right now. And we still have a lot of time for you to answer questions, uh, to ask our questions. Uh, so maybe Bota, if you would like to say something uh, because I know that you've been very active in the chat room. There were some interesting discussions going on. Uh, yes, absolutely. I would just say thank you for your interest. And this really inspires us a lot because for us, that just started also as for you. So that, uh, but of course, in different settings, not online, but offline, that we met amazing WIPW members. And after that, we got so inspired that we wanted to do something, you know, to have some activities and organize something. And we didn't know where to start. Uh, <laughs> and then we, we encountered, we saw information about this Blue Peace Index and we were so much inspired to organize something. And that's why we came up with this idea. And uh, if you would like to organize something like this, or if you need any help, any advice, you can contact Natalia and me. We're in Facebook and LinkedIn. And um, uh, you can see also in the chat our emails. Just uh, drop us a line. We can also schedule a call and discuss this. And uh, yeah, absolutely, we'll be happy to see um, if there would be other uh, calculations in other river basins. Thank you so much. And if you have any questions, I think you can ask them now. Yeah, I think you can just unmute yourself and ask questions. Oh, I have, I see the raised hand. Yes, go ahead, Prabhat. Uh, thank you. Thank you, first of all, to the speakers for the wonderful uh, discussion. And I think this is quite uh, interesting, something that can be uh, done in, in other uh, river basins as well. Uh, I have uh, actually a two-part question. Uh, and actually, the, the, both my questions come from the fact that I haven't participated in the in a in the process, so it may be a bit um, uh, silly, let's say. Uh, but but the question is about the uh, general acceptability of this index, um, because from what I understood, uh, you I mean there you have some people who kind of uh, follow a, a, a procedure to somehow come up with a score to rate the, the basins and the countries, right? Um, does that uh, involve uh, stakeholders from those countries or those basins? And for example, if one basin is scored poorly or one country is, is not rated as high, then that might not um, sound well or that, that, that might be controversial. So uh, what is the general acceptability of this index and how has, or, or has it been ratified by the countries or the water basins or, or the water sectors like UN water um, or something like that. Uh, yeah. That's a super good question. I think only SDC can answer it that because what we were uh, promoting is to have such an index calculated at the youth level 
and it doesn't so we're not speaking that it will have this kind of you know acceptability we're thinking that this will just raise the awareness this will raise the research skills of the youth participating in the calculations but if stephanie is with us maybe she can answer your question on the more political level on the official level of you know calculating calculating the blue piece index yes indeed i'm still with you um, actually, this is a, an extremely, extremely crucial and intelligent question. And I think that really depends on what is the aim of your index. Uh, it, as I mentioned earlier, you can use it for different, different aims and with different sets of stakeholders. But I also mentioned that you can use it at different scale, be it some river basins or this, the whole river basin in itself, which can be huge. But um, it depends on what you present it. If you want to use it as a tool for capacity building, then you will really more focus on um, owning and understanding the different indicators behind the index and to try and gather the different stakeholders around this understanding. If you really want to look at how to improve the situation, then you will more try to focus on the recommendations and the conclusions coming out of the analysis along these five different pillars, which you have heard earlier on, to see which are the pillars which are the weakest or which can be improved. Of course, if you come out at the end of the day with a, with a rating which says, fine, the Amazon is, or the Tigris Euphrates, to take an example, which we currently have, is the worst rated in terms of the end figure and the end assessment. It can, of course, be seen and be perceived as a very sensitive way of presenting things. And that's where you have to also handle a bit the expectations, handle also the understanding, and from my perspective, the sooner you can bring on board the different stakeholders, the better it will be easier to communicate the results also. And so that's something which we really want to work on currently because the first five indicators, as I mentioned earlier on, so the first five basins rated were test driving of the exercise to be able to assess a bit how this index could work out, to be able to refine the indicators used behind it. But now we really need to step up and to go into stakeholder engagement and involving all of them from the onset to work through these ratings. I hope it provides some answers to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, so that was, you still have the, the hand raised? You have the no. second question? Okay. <laughs> Is there anyone also wanting to ask the question? There was the Judith that put a question in the chat a little bit earlier that I don't think uh, we got to yet. She was asking, is the BPI in any way connected to food agriculture, maybe with food security? Food security. Buddha, do you think there was a food security? Uh, yes, I think uh, the because the Blue Peace Index, it, um, it is a group of around 80 indexes, uh, indicators, which are divided into five groups. And one of them, I think it is for cooperation context, which uh, has different indicators uh, related to overall country, uh, overall situation in the country related to water and which could also um, influence cooperation of this country with other basins, with other countries of the, of the basin. Uh, and I think there is an indicator, uh, one or two, which also relates to water stress. And I think, but I'm not sure we should double check this. Um, or maybe you could go to the website of the Blue Peace Index and check there the indicators, um, which also I'm sure about the water stress, but directly about food security, I'm not 100% sure <laughs> right now. I don't remember. But I remember that, oh, there is, there is, there is hand from Stephanie, yes. Yes, just to add, uh, indeed, uh, the, behind the index, you have a lot of different components which are taken into consideration. But then again, it's what you do with this index. And the link between water security and food security is an obvious one. So then the idea is to say, well, fine, if indeed the rating is rather weak, you can also assume that the well you will of course assume that the cooperation between the countries to handle the water in an equitable and sustainable matter, manner is weak which will have implications in terms of food security so again is the way you bring this index forward so there is a lot behind it you can also look into the links with health the links with migration the links with even just human security so it's it's um it's quite let's say holistic index 
which you can bring up according to the different elements you want to highlight. Perfect. Thank you so much. Do we have burning questions at this moment? I think there was maybe one more question that came up earlier in the chat that I found super interesting. I think it was already answered in the chat, but maybe we could just address it super quickly before we finish off. Um, it was Lorette that was asking about how do you connect the Blue Peace Index with the private sector? Um, I thought that was a pretty interesting question. That's a good question indeed, the private sector. Well, what we did from our side when we just started was that we tried to calculate the index or to make it just by with the help of youth, uh, with our group mates and like-minded people. But uh, what we also discussed at some point with the, with our um, friends from Central Asia was that uh, it would be also great to involve a wider group of stakeholders. Uh, not only the youth groups, but also, for example, to have private sector representatives there, because we think that everyone should be more conscious about what affects actual transboundary cooperation and what actually creates when we speak about transboundary cooperation, what is there, what are the elements of successful transboundary cooperation. And therefore, if more people would be involved there, that would be better. So, and therefore, uh, I think this process should start. I mean, it would be good if you, for example, would uh, would wish to organize something, and if from the beginning you could involve some civil society representatives, private sector, maybe even government representatives. Uh, we think that would be fantastic. Maybe research institute and different stakeholders. And therefore, we haven't done that. But again, as I said, it's quite a flexible. I mean, from our experience, Blue Peace Index is quite flexible as a tool. Um, not not an official one, not formalized one, but uh, something just to to sit together, to think together, and also to to calculate. Uh, and therefore, I think it is available and free to use to everyone. And therefore, I think it has a great potential also in, of involving different people. Thank you so much. I think that's all the time that we have for today.